Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. There had been a friction well before World War II. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Following the attack on Pearl Harbor, President Franklin Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, often referred to as the Japanese Relocation Act. They couldn't figure out who was loyal to Japan, and if you looked like the enemy, you were suspect. In a matter of months, more than 120,000 Japanese Americans were forcibly removed from their homes and bused to one of 10 different internment camps built in the western United States. I would have dreams, and I had dreams into my adulthood. One of those internment camps was Manzanar in southeastern California. Uh, it just brings back all these strange emotions. On land that was raw, untamed, but full of opportunity, here they would build schools, educate their children, reclaim the desert. Rooms were basically 20 by 25. Uh, you had three things. You had a cot for each person, a, uh, a stove, and a light bulb. That's it. The federal government told the Japanese that the internment camps were for their own safety and kept them there for over three years. For me, even as a you know, seven-year-old kid, you know, camp was to me barbed wire and guard towers. A lot of the people who were incarcerated at Manzanar Every year, members of the Florin chapter of the Japanese American Citizens League make a pilgrimage from Sacramento to Manzanar National Historic Site, a dusty, wind-beaten plot of land just outside of Death Valley. It was a trip that turned into a pilgrimage. Few internment camps are as well-preserved as Manzanar. That's why Stanley Umeda makes his pilgrimage here instead of Jerome, Arkansas, where he and his family were incarcerated. This is his 15th visit. I recall this place more as a place of honor than of disgrace because this is where we survive. We are setting a standard for the rest of the world in the treatment of people who may have loyalties to an enemy nation. Despite the propaganda put out by the federal government, survival here was hard and conditions were not good. Oh yeah, yeah, right from the beginning, you know, it was hell for them. First not knowing exactly why, especially the East Asians, since they couldn't speak English. There's dad, George Kiyoshi, Dorothy Kazue Yamamoto, Georgette, there's, there's Georgette's name. Gary Yamamoto's parents grew up farming in the Sacramento Valley. Before meeting, they were both forced to abandon their homes and move here. They were just, you know, overwhelmed when they, when they had to pack up everything in 48 hours to take carry as much as you could. Privacy at Manzanar was basically non-existent. Public toilets had no walls, the makeshift shelters had no partitions, and everybody was exposed to the elements. But despite the conditions, Gary's parents found love. This is where they met, uh, this is where they fell in love, and this is where they got married. This is Gary's first trip to Manzanar. His mother and father spoke very little about their experience, but he does remember stories of their wedding night. Their honeymoon was where the rest of the family kind of moved over to one of the other family's barracks temporarily so that my mother and father could have some privacy on their wedding night. This was put on the health and care of these American children of Japanese descent. The children who were sent to internment camps are some of the only incarcerated living people today. In the 1940s, the federal government's propaganda painted a rosy picture of their treatment inside these camps. But throughout her childhood, Christine had nightmares from the ill treatment she received. But essentially the dream was being placed in a panel truck without windows. Being, they slam the door, it's black and screaming. That's my dream. The nightmare that Christine had comes from her memory of catching pneumonia and being forced to recover in a hospital alone. After that recovery, Christine and her family were relocated to two different camps, Tulare, California and Topaz, Utah. 
like many children in these internment camps, trauma followed Christine, but she feels the need to visit these internment camps so she can share her story. For a teenager, you can imagine that privacy was the biggest issue. Um, I think you know, so what? This happened to us, but what is the, what is the lesson to be learned? In 42, we didn't have a voice. We didn't have political leaders. We were, no one supported us. They didn't know us. And so the thing that we want to say is, we have a voice now. We need to stand up, speak out for ourselves and for others. We're here today to right a grave wrong. We must recognize that the internment of Japanese Americans was just that, a mistake. It would take more than 40 years for the federal government to admit they were wrong. In 1988, President Reagan signed a bill giving surviving members of the internment camps reparations of $20,000. You know, they have never apologized for anything. This is the first apology, and that meant so much to get that uh, letter of apology. The unthinkable happened today. The World Trade Center, both towers, gone. Just 13 years after President Reagan's apology, America almost made the same mistake again. Preventative campaign of arrest and detection of lawbreakers, America has grown stronger and safer. Our country has not really learned, because uh, during 9-11 they were already considering rounding up Muslims. Manzanar National Historic Site is here for the people to remember. Yeah, I'm going to have such a much deeper appreciation for the way my ancestors withstood this. A site to remember the wrongs that the federal government committed towards Japanese living in America. Those of us who have survived these camps must share in order so that it will not happen again. For Manzanar National Historic Site, I'm John Bartell.